hormones. Yeah. Growth hormone. Yeah. Testosterone. I mean, yep. getting the sex hormones. Um, yeah. I was quite surprised by you know some of some of the data coming out of your lab. Yeah. That showed, and maybe you can explain it because you'll explain it better than I do. But you know, looking at what effect, for example, growth hormone has on muscle protein synthesis. Yeah, yeah. So, so this this started in, in you know to give you the origins or the genesis of this story. We were we were I was early in my my faculty appointment, and we were doing these studies where we were infusing people with labeled amino acids to measure the rate of muscle protein synthesis. So we were measuring these in, the, the incorporation of these amino acids, and we had people exercising. These were mostly young men freely admit that. We're making a push to do younger women and older women and middle-aged women, perimenopausal women. So stay tuned. It's, it's coming. Um, and we would send it in for publication and they said, you haven't measured, you know, testosterone growth hormone and or insulin-like growth factor. And they go up after exercise and they're driving this protein synthetic response. And my training is as a biochemist. I'm not an exercise physiologist. I'm a varsity athlete, so you know, the, pairing the two seemed logical to me. And I'd actually worked with you know some people that were pretty good with with steroid uh, biochemistry. And my understanding was that steroid hormones, testosterone, that sort of thing, slid across membranes, bound to a receptor. Receptor went into the nucleus, modified the expression of genes. And that takes a long time. That's not a transitory, you know, testosterone's up, they do this, and 15 minutes later it's back down. Uh, and growth hormone, the same thing. Uh, so we thought, you know, we, we need to test this. We either need to show that those hormones are important or they're not. And so that's why we, we don't think we need to measure them. Um, and it's a journey that we, it's taken us, you know, 20 years, uh, probably about four PhD students, a couple of good postdocs. Uh, so it's been a good one. Lots of people have chipped in. Um, and we've, we've tried very, very hard to show that those, those hormones have an anabolic effect. And we've never been able to see it. And we've manipulated all kinds of experimental conditions and we just don't see an impact. Um, I think the most damning evidence against testosterone as a big driver of muscle protein synthesis is to say, you know, if you take men and women and, and agreed, like men start out with more muscle mass than women and you resistance train them. And this is a meta-analysis now, um, a guy named Brandon Roberts did this one, uh, and, and you, you resistance train them relative to what they started with, everybody goes up the same amount. Women get the same amount of muscle growth as, as men do, but they had less muscle to start with because you know boys and girls are like this. Puberty happens, boys become men, uh, mannish, um, and that's the testosterone surge. But after that, they just sort of they they follow each other. Uh, so the big T, not so important. Now, this is where people say, but steroids work. I'm like, absolutely. And so this is the normal diurnal variation in testosterone. This is steroids. It's about two to three standard deviations away. And if the person is taking it either orally or as an injectable, uh, it's up all the time. And whereas we're talking about transient fluctuations in hormones throughout the day. If you take men and they have a diagnosis of prostate cancer, they're often put on androgen deprivation therapy. So this, they're, they're taken from a, 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 a normal testosterone state to a, a, a hypogonadal state. And yeah, they lose muscle mass. They, they, they actually, it's almost a feminizing process for these guys, but it's good news for the prostate tumor, which is a reproductive hormone driven tumor. And, and, and you know, the dirty secret that we're trying to sort of, you know, our lab and lots of others are trying to sort of convince and talk to women, particularly around menopause, is it's not just bone that drops off, it's muscle too. And that's the loss of estrogen mediated stimulation of protein synthesis. So, you know, that, that's the sort of the testosterone story. And I think it's, it's pretty much we can put that one to bed. Now, I will say this is there's a lot of people making a lot of noise and a lot of water about certain supplements that boost testosterone and do this, that, and the other. And my, I just came from uh, the American College of Sports Medicine meetings and listened to a great talk. A good friend of mine, Eric Rawson, said, you know, this is a case of what's old is new. Um, 
there have been in my 25 year career now at McMaster, probably about two dozen testosterone boosting supplements that I've seen come and go. And then it seems like we, we just can't get rid of them. Uh, like, so there's another, you know, there's two or three hot ones out now and um, I won't name them, but let's just say, you know, I get DMs on Instagram, which one should I take? I'm like, save your money. Like it's, wh why bother? Like just get to the gym and lift. And that tends to upset a lot of people. Uh, I, I do think, however, if you go and you look back at, you know, it was Andrastine Dione, Andrastine Diol, it was Echidis, it was a hormone precursor. I'm having trouble getting my, my tongue around here. Uh, it was plant-based hormones, it was et cetera, et cetera. None of these, you know, fenugreek, none of these things have worked. It's, it, again, look at the sum totality of the research. Not one study, not one person uh, talking about this on, a, on an Instagram reel. I think you just need to step back. And, you know, uh, Philip's quote unquote, three rules of supplements uh, taken from a good uh, mentor of mine, Ron Mon. If it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. Um, if it's too good to be true, it's probably banned or you need a big prescription for it. Uh, there may be some exceptions as rule number three, but there are very few.